So now we would like to invite and welcome our next speaker. Our next speaker is uh, Tosin Adikani. She's a data ninja from FoodAC and she's going to do a presentation, a no code approach to mach machine learning. If you can have uh, Tosin online, please say. Hello, Hi, everyone. Hello, good afternoon. Thank you for having me. Good afternoon, it's a pleasure indeed, yeah. Over to you. you. Let me just launch my slides. Okay, perfect. So I'm gonna be talking about a no code approach to machine learning and how we can make data science and machine learning more accessible to everyone. So a bit about my background. I did my undergraduate in psychology and psychology is a field where we do a lot of things which are easily transferable to the data science field. We use the scientific method, we do A-B testing, we do a lot of statistics and I was very, very heavily engaged during my undergraduate in psychology. I went for my MBA in business analytics, and this is where I really got introduced to machine learning algorithms. And I've worked in the financial industry. I can see how this is often used there. And right now I work at Foodac, where we use a lot of AI models to really help us be competitive because the food tech industry in, in this region is pretty competitive. And I'm also generally very, very curious. So I do lots of projects on machine learning, which you can find on some of these places I have on the right hand side. But since I was introduced to this field in psychology, I wasn't really introduced in programming, which is something I'm going to cover because this is often an obstacle for people to get into this field. And you know, machine learning, it's, it's really, really cool. There are so many applications, there's so many things we can use these tools for. For instance, natural language processing, we can use this to build chatbots or to even diagnose diseases when you know medical doctors can feeding patients notes to narrow down on, on how they can help the patient by identifying the illness. We can do time series forecasting to help companies prepare for the, food, for the future to predict revenue, to predict the demand and things like that so that, so that they can better service the customers. In finance, we use machine learning for fraud detection a lot because this costs companies billions of dollars. And for customers, it's very, very stressful because if you've suddenly lost so much money, which you might not be able to get back. Recommendation systems such as Netflix leverage machine learning a lot to help you identify what you, what you can watch and help you discover new things. In sports, athletes leverage machine learning to see how different variables such as their diet, their training time affects their performance. And of course, self-driving cars, the cars can identify and analyze different things from the environment to figure out what they are to build a path for it to move. But the challenge is, you know, in as much as machine learning is fun, there are lots of things you have to learn. You have to learn the theory, for instance, when is it appropriate to use to use a decision tree versus a linear regression model versus time series forecasting. You need to know how to interpret a confusion matrix. You might need to learn some mathematics to make sense of certain values. And of course, a lot of statistics and domain expertise, because how you approach different problems changes when you move across industries and you need time and patience to fine tune your model. So it's a great fun field, but it can be challenging. And then when you layer on needing to program, this can make it extra challenging and kind of impossible for some people. Now I do want to clarify, I strongly recommend programming. I think once you learn how to program, you almost unlock a part of your brain and you're able to approach problems differently. So while I think programming is great, I would disagree that it's not necessary in many cases for machine learning. Um, ultimately, it's just a tool, and there are often other methods we can use which don't involve programming. So the solution is a concept known as visual programming. This allows you to control programs by configuring mini components, which we refer to as nodes. And what this does is it communicates with the, with the code on the back end, but you get a very nice user-friendly way to build these algorithms or to build different things that, you, that can be useful for you. And it's great because it's natural to use. Uh, oftentimes programmers, including myself, sometimes I have to consult Stack Overflow and I have to be stuck on a bug for sometimes days. But with visual programming, you don't have these obstacles. And the way it's designed, it's kind of self-documents so that it's easy for you to explain to your colleagues what you did or explain to a, new to a new person what you did. And it's also reusable, it's automatable and it's callable. So I can call a different workflow from another workflow and in a second, you see what I mean by that. But you can see here, I'm reading in a file and I get to configure where the file is located. I get to 
configure if it has column headers, if it has row IDs. And over here in the transform section, I'm also able to select and deselect certain columns and also specify the data types. So I can configure everything from here. There are many different options for no code software. We have open source ones and we have paid options. And they usually all allow you to bring data in, take it out. You can clean, transform, and explore data. You can build models. You can, you can evaluate and fine tune your models and you can deploy and monitor your models. These are all things that we have to do when we do machine learning. So over here, I have some of the solutions I'm familiar with. NIME is the one I recommend because it's open source. Open source meaning that it's free. But the reason why that's so powerful is because since almost everybody has access to it, you're able to even build extra tools. So NIME itself comes with a lot of tools, but then you have community members such as myself who build extra tools for it. So there's hardly anything you can't do in NIME. And it also integrates a lot with other platforms as well. Altrix is another one. They are very known for their user friendliness and they also have very nice training programs. Orange is also open source and you also have IBM SPSS modeler. So you have many options for that. So I'm gonna walk you through an example of using this no code approach to predict customer churn. So here I read in the data, then in here, this is called a meta node. So I have many nodes in there and all of those nodes help with the data exploration and cleaning. And then finally, I have some nodes which deal with data modeling. So for data exploration and cleaning, this is what the workflow looks like. Now this data set was relatively clean. So I don't have a lot of steps for data cleaning, but all I had to do was to convert the churn to a string variable type because it came in as a number. And for a classification problem, the target needs to be a string. So here I explored the data to see, you know, if I have anything missing, I built some graphs to see if I can find variables which could explain churn. For instance, I found that people who, have, who don't have a data plan are more likely to churn. So that's one thing I found and I explored several other things as well. Data modeling, this, you know, it's, it, it's a lot of notes which helped me build that final model. So one thing I did here, I had to check if variables were correlated with each other because if that's the case, you want to filter them out to have a better model. You can also partition your data into train test split. These are all steps that you usually have to, you know, write a lot of code to do, but you can do it visually, which is, is just much more easier for people to handle. And you can deal with class imbalance using various methods. And this here is a meta node, a component, sorry, that I really like because it lets you build several models all at once and identify which one you really, really want to follow through on. So when I did this, I realized that the XU boost was the one to go with, and that's what I used to predict churn. And the results in this case, we can catch about 64% of the customers who are about to leave. And if we can even retain 20% of them, that's gonna really help the company keep its revenue a lot. Here I have some insights, some, some um, graphs, some pictures, sorry, to show you the auto ML in NIME. So see how here we can specify the target and we can select different models to build. And over here, we can select if we want the selection to focus on accuracy or some other measure. And we can do cross validation as well, which is very, very key in data science to make sure you're using the, the full uh, set of your data for both training and testing. And here it builds several models. So it builds the gradient boosted tree, decision tree, random forest, and XG boost. And it gives us the different metrics for all of these. So looking at these, I can see in all cases, the XG boost is the orange one. It is the best one in all cases. That's why I decided to focus on that. So instead of writing lines and lines of code, which works for some cases, but for some people, coding is just not something that that's, they stick with. And that doesn't mean they shouldn't be able to participate in, in the data science field. So instead of doing that and potentially getting stuck or making some mistakes, you can do it, you can do it visually and get you know, some very, very good output. And for the deployment side, you can deploy in the server for some real-time use. So for instance, credit card companies use this all the time. So whenever you go to the supermarket, you usually have some algorithms checking your transaction to see if it's likely to be fraud. And those rely on real-time deployment, but you can also write your model to a PPML writer. 
this lets you use that model within NIME. So right now, if you the model to predict uh, customer churn, we can actually bring in some new customers, run them through the model, and see if they're likely to churn so that we can take action to keep them as part of the company. So I've presented this to you and I really hope your students watching because you know I know oftentimes when people see all the things they need to learn to become a data scientist, they can get scared, but at least this method of the no code approach takes down one of those obstacles. End of the day, compared to a decade ago, we're having a lot more resources and a lot more tools to be able to approach real life problems using data science because there's so much opportunity, there's so much applications out there and there's a lot of room for career growth. So I hope you know some people look into solutions such as this so that they can get the benefits of data science that they may not be able to get into if they had to learn programming. And this is the end of my presentation. Thank you so much for having me. Thank you, Tosin, for being with us and for this presentation. Tosin, thank you so much. Uh, there are no questions uh, at the moment. If there are any, we'll send it across to you. Thank you for being with us.